So this is Hartsmoor Fishery and welcome. You're gonna join me on this session and what remarkable little place it is. So we're in Columpton, Devon, about 15 minutes from the historic town of uh, Honiton. And what you can see, probably the easiest parking you're ever gonna find. Down the lane, it's all secure, lock gate up there, lock gate here, park your car up, walk around, phenomenal. What I love about this place is the history. It's very rich in it. The complex itself has stood for about 40 years. This lake, which is John's Lake, there's four lakes on site, but John's Lake's bookable on catch, and it's been syndicate for 35 years. I moved down to Devon about three odd years ago, and I'd done my research where I wanted to fish, and this kept cropping up, but I couldn't manage to get my foot in the door. I just, it was a bit too far, so I didn't want to chase it too much. It's about an hour from me and I weren't really sure what I was doing, but now it's on catch, I've come here, and I'm very glad I did. So this swim here is sort of the second swim as you come in via the gate, and this is where I actually set up and fish. And the reason I fish for that is because on arrival, there was two anglers fishing over there. This was quiet, and there was a lot of fish showing. So fish-wise, there's about 120 fish, and they go up to 32 pounds in weight. And as I said before, there's a lot of history of this place with the fish, and there are some of the older ones present, and they're incredibly marked, beautifully scaled fish, and there are some nice long lean uh, commons to go at as well. But also to back that up, Rory and Paul put in a lot of work, a lot of hard effort, and their fish coming through are phenomenal. They've been stocked in from sort of probably low doubles onwards, and they are really thriving, and they're sort of pushing them older fish to have a, a second wind, put some weight on, and actually start moving about eating. You can drop on fish here, catch them. You can catch them in the edge, catch them on traditional methods out sort of more in the middle, but also surface fishing. I've been told it is phenomenal for that. When I come, and like today, it was very overcast. There was a lot of rain as well. So it wasn't fantastic for, for that type of fishing. However, Pete and myself did catch them. Rory had a couple, he only joined us for that night as well. But yeah, there's a lot to go at in there. Well, how about that for a start? Just over 18 pound. Gnarly looking old one, look at his tail. Absolutely beautiful fish. The rod hadn't been out no longer than five minutes. And off it went. Underarm flick, about 20 odd yards. Thank you very much. Oh, it's more fishery. Couldn't be happier. and it behaved. Second bite from Hartsmoor. Built like a torpedo he is. Beautiful. As you might be able to tell, the bank you come in immediately from the car park is quite a high bank. And I really like that because it gives you a great vantage point. When I arrived on my last session, I was able to actively get up here, look for fish, and it was fantastic. What sort of bubbles, what sort of shadows passing, it was really good for that. The swims on this side, I believe there's three, if I'm right in thinking that, and they're sunken in, so you are straight down to water level. You almost feel like a little hobbit tucked away there. It's got a really nice feel. You're protected away from the elements of the wind or if you're like me, you probably feel like a little teddy tubby in a hole, to be honest. But it is a phenomenal little, it's so different, it's very unique. And like I say, you're quite sheltered, very secluded and private. And from each swim, you have a real good vantage point and sort of view of the lake. But this high bank is a fantastic place. You ain't got to get up trees and do any of that dangerous work. You can just come, scour the banks, back and forth, back and forth and go. There's nine swims, but only seven anglers at one time, so that does allow you the chance to move. Now, like I said, it's about two and a half acres in size. The furthest left-hand side, there is a little island, which obviously does attract fish, and they do get round there, especially sort of when the sun's out. But there's two or three, I believe, um, outlets along the lake. And when it rains, obviously, that produces a lot of fresh water into the lake. And I found they really did react to that. Fish were really moving around, and they were showing like crazy. It was fantastic to see but there's so much to go at. The margins produce out in open water. There are a few humps, bumps, and sort of bars to find as well. So you can have a little donk around. You can also use a bait boat. 
Personally, I don't think there's much need, um, especially if, sort of, if you aren't impaired, you, you can fish quite easily. However, I do see the benefit maybe of a baiting pole. So I suppose baiting pole, bait boat, depends what you've got, depends your preference. But the fish do fizz and show relatively shallow, uh, relatively close, sorry. So if you can get on top and lower a rig gently, it will serve you well. I used to fish with small leads when I was doing that approach, casting traditionally, and I did pick them up. And if I can catch them, I'm pretty sure you can. Well, good morning. And I'm thankful to say the rain has stopped. I had a great night's sleep. It's so peaceful here. A lot of venues tell you they're off the beaten track. This place is next level. You don't hear car noise. You don't hear nothing. If you're lucky, you're the old plane, which tells you civilization's still ticking by. Other than that, birds and carp boshing. There ain't been as many boshes this morning yet, but there has been a few bubblers and fizzes coming up. And the best wake up call I had was about half five this morning. Middle rod, which was out in open water, seven and a bit wraps. I think I'm off the back of the bar after speaking to um, Rory. And yeah, I've got a lovely, nice mirror in the net to show you. So I'm going to get them boys up and I'll show you exactly what it's about at Hartsmoor. Lovely car, peaceful surroundings, it's bliss. Well, I told you I had a good one this morning. Absolutely stunning mirror, look at that. Artsmore Fishery at its finest. He's angry, so I'm gonna get him back. But what a result. Absolutely made up with that. <laughs> Oh, come on, you. Here, yeah, boy. Wow. Look at that. Unbelievable. Hartsmoor's biggie. Over 31 pound. Fish called Solo. Well over 25 years old. Hartsmoor has certainly been kind to me. Unbelievable. All this on a 24 hour session. <sighs> if you didn't need a reason to get down here, let this be it. All 31 pounds of it. Absolutely buzzing. Well done, mate. Yeah, Have some cool. steels as well. Of course you can, mate. Yeah. I think you're entitled to that, bud. For me, I think for anglers turning up first and foremost, a couple of tips I'd give, like any venue really, you do want to walk it, you do want to have a look. It is watercraft booking, so once you book your ticket, you can do the lap and then decide where to set up, so that's not a problem. But as you can see, the water is quite coloured, especially after rain, and we have had quite a bit of heavy sort of thunder rain in the last couple of nights. And the stinky baits for me, I every session I fish, generally they're 24, 48 hours, venues I haven't fished before, so I like a nice stinky bait. I opt for garlic, I think it's very powerful fish attractant, but I would definitely be doing it and I'd be baiting little and often, you know, I would be trying to nick bites. I've never been a great bait and weight angler, so for me it's all about creating opportunities. When we was here, we managed to stalk him out of the edge, sort of the furthest left, because we found him in the edge and got him going. And then I did prepare a couple of spots, but even then I didn't bait too heavily. I'm fishing for a bite at a time, really. The setting itself is phenomenal. You tuck down in a little valley and it is so quiet. If you're fortunate, you might hear a cow, you might hear a deer, pheasant. I believe there's wallabies that actually escape from somewhere quite local and, and they can be seen occasionally, very rarely. I thought they were pulling my leg at first, but apparently that is actually a thing. Yeah, it's a fantastic little place, really quiet. You've got to come and enjoy it. It feels old school, I love it. I have come down here just to do these words because I fluffed it on the first time I come down. But I don't know whether to grab a rod out or not. <laughs>